Okay, hi guys. This is a response to Jesus Freak um, and his video Atheist Need to Believe. I think that should be Atheists, I think. But he's put Atheist Need to Believe Creation. Now, Jesus Freak's been going for a long time. He's going, been going for longer than me. He's got a, a substantially larger channel than me. And amazingly, this is the first time I've ever made a response to one of his videos. But I, before I launch myself into the response, I just want to make a couple of comments on Jesus Freak. Because I made, I've only ever commented once on Jesus Freak. And that was to include his name in a, a, a list of, of theists, Christians I was ranting about and I think I was talking about somebody, an atheist being laid on the floor, um, not in a very good state and that I wouldn't, if I was that atheist, these aren't the people that I would want walking past because I wouldn't hold out much hope of them helping me. I included Jesus Freak in that list, I shouldn't have done so. Since then I've watched more of his videos, got more of a, uh, a feel for what the guy's about and I, was, I think I was wrong about him, I think he seems a nice bloke and, and I apologise for, for the casting aspersions on his character at the time when I did that. Okay, let's go on with the video. I'm just going to play you a brief clip of the video, um, and then I'm going to make a comment on that, and then we'll we'll go from there. But you know, people say mosquitoes are kind of bad out here. But people will say, oh, you know, this all just happened by random chance, and I just don't see how that could possibly happen. When we look at creation and we look at evolution. The, the odds that we would just randomly come about into existence and also... Okay, well the comment I'm going to make here is to tell you that I ain't going to really comment on this. This is the bit that everybody's going to pick up on, this random chance bit. So what's the point me adding my weight to this? I want to progress a little bit further into the video. And I'm going to play you everything he says from 1 minute 11 to 2 minutes and 10 seconds, something like that. Unexpurgated. But I'm going to play it in two chunks because I want to comment on the first chunk and then the second chunk. This is where he's talking about genetics and, and making his case to, uh, with regards to the genetic case for evolution so let me play you the first chunk uh, and then we'll have a bit of fun with that okay you know people will say well evolution is backed by the the sheer dna of chimpanzees and mice and such and we see common building blocks sure we see common building blocks within the human body and the earth both contain carbon both contain you know myriads of different compounds and chemicals that you know, are, are, are prevalent in both. It seems to me that it would make sense that if our Heavenly Father was going to create life, he would use some of the same genetic code when they're doing the exact same thing. Okay, well this is a very, very good point that he makes because people do use evolution in this kind of way and they say, yeah, common genes, you know, different mammals, I don't know how far back do you want to go, chordates, deuterostomes, eukaryotes, prokaryotes, however far back you go there's these common genes, so that's evidence of evolution. But it is or would also be evidence of a common designer. But that's taking a very simplified viewpoint of what the same gene means. Um, Right, I'm a layperson, same as you, Jesus Freak, so if I can understand this, so can you, my friend. Look, I'll keep it, and I'll simplify it, right? There are different types of, of genetic mutation. One of them is what's called a synonymous mutation. If it becomes fixed in the genome, it becomes, in a population, it becomes called a synonymous substitution. And this is the change to a codon. Codons create uh, transcribed into amino acids which make the protein chains that result it's a change in the spelling of a codon that still allows it to make the same amino acid so natural selection just sees the same protein chain there's nothing for natural selection to work on it's a change in the gene that gives the same result so we still regard it as the same gene but it's a different spelling let me show you an example of protein sequence from a gene called elongation factor 1 alpha. Here it is, right? You can see I've chosen a human and a tomato plant here. Um, yeah, I find it tremendously funny because I know somebody will say, ha ha, yes, you think your uncle is a tomato plant. I found it funny. I laugh. My uncle didn't laugh when I mentioned it, but then he is a tomato plant, so he wouldn't do, would he? Notice... In this sequence, this is the sequence of amino acids that result. There's only one difference in amino acids out of 26, okay? But it's still the same gene, it still does the same thing. 
but only one change out of 26 in all that difference okay but if you were to look at the actual spelling on the genome if you were to look at all the 78 nucleotides behind this you'd find there were 13 differences in the 78 but all these other differences are synonymous ones they don't affect the protein that results you talk about common designer, common genes, but why would a designer spell them differently? It's like, here's my, well this isn't a script for a video because I don't script my videos, but let's say it was, okay? Why would I spell part of it in, why would I have one script in international English with colour spelt O-U-R and another script with colour spelt O-R in American English when you're not going to be able to tell, when I read them out, when I like transcribe the script, you can't tell any difference. You know, it, it would be, you wouldn't be able to select between which copy, had I used the international English one or had I used the American English one, because when they're transcribed they sound the same. You see, so this common designer, same designer using the same genes, it's not really true when you look at these synonymous substitutions, these mutations that become fixed that make no difference to the result. Let's have a look at something else that, that Jesus Speak has to say. That if our Heavenly Father was going to create life, he would use some of the same genetic code when they were doing the exact same thing. That would be evidence to me of a thrifty wise creator, a creator that isn't wasteful. So if you have the genetic code for muscle mass, muscle flesh, tissue and such and bones, why not use that same genetic code? Okay, now I hope you listened very carefully to what he said. What he said was a thrifty and wise designer, just in case you weren't listening, would use the same genes. He gave muscle mass as an example. He would reuse the same gene for muscle mass in different creatures. So let's look at a gene for muscle mass. Let's look at the MY816 gene for muscle mass. This gene is same gene. And I'm going to show you a gene sequence. And it's the same in a chimp and in a gorilla and in a macaque, an old world monkey. Different primates, same gene. It's doing the same function, which is to, to help to give this great big musculature of the jaw, which enables them to, to, to digest and masticate tough foodstuffs. Humans don't express this gene, they don't have the great big muscles. Some people have postulated that it's this, the fact that our muscles have shrunk so much from our, that operate our jaw that's allowed our, our skulls to thin down a bit and to expand a bit and to allow us to have these larger brains, okay? We don't express this gene, but let's look at the sequence. Let's see what we find. What we find is that the sequence is still there in human beings, but there are a couple of deletions, a couple of the nucleotides have been deleted, and because those nucleotides are deleted, oh dear, it means the gene isn't expressed anymore. But where's the thrifty, wise creator now? Why would a thrifty, wise creator still stick it in human beings? You know, evolution explains this, but, but design does not. Jesus freak, I can put computers together. I'm not brilliant at it, but I can do it. I can buy all the parts and I can put them together. Let's say I wanted to, to make you a computer. Well, I've got an old computer out the back, okay? And I could put a few new bits in it and I could make you a computer. Now, the floppy drive, it's not worked for a number of years, so I could take that out. But then there's going to be a big hole in the front, so, so I might as well just leave it in there. Just don't use it. It doesn't work. Oh, you want a computer made from fresh with brand new everything, brand new case. Okay, um, so I'll make you one. Do you do you do you do want a floppy drive? You don't want to, you don't use floppy disks anymore. You've no old disks. Okay, well this is what I'll do then. I'll create you a computer. Um, I'll still buy the floppy drive, but I'll smash it to pieces so it doesn't work, and then I'll put it in. Does that make any sense? No, you just wouldn't buy the floppy drive, would you? So your wise and thrifty creator argument doesn't explain this, doesn't explain why humans still have this, what's called a pseudo-gene. The gene is still there, it just doesn't work anymore. These are questions that you need to answer before this genetic argument you've made really stands up to water. Holds water. Stands up to argument. You know what I mean. Thank you for listening. Bye now.